<laughs> Welcome to Toffee Blue View, your source for all things Everton. I'm Jerry. Max and Terry are with me, as, as they always are, usually are, often are. Let's move in. Arsenal preview. Right now, they are currently fourth in the table. They've been playing pretty well. 19-6-6 uh, six and six on 63 points. Recently, they beat Newcastle 2-0, beat Rennes 3-0 in Europa League in order to advance to the next round after they had lost a few weeks before to the same team, uh, and they overcame the deficit, and actually they were able to go, and they beat United 2-0. All right. I'm not going to go into possible starters um, just because I don't like talking for too long in a row. I don't feel like the world needs that. So let's start with – let's go with Max to start because every time we've been going to, with Terry, and you know what? Terry at this point is a flipping regular. So Max – you know, let's go with you. What? How are you feeling about this particular matchup? Don't give me any predictions or anything, but uh, the job that you feel like, uh, you know, the new manager's doing and everything, players they brought in. How are you feeling about this Arsenal team? Well, I, I remember writing a piece on Arsenal about you and I, Emily, a, a few months back, and I think, I think you can kind of sweep them with the same brush as the likes of Chelsea and Manchester United, and that you know. After well, maybe more so with Manchester United after you know such a long-standing manager in in, in Arsene Wenger, it it's never it's never going to be you know an easy transition, is it? After mm -hmm. he's won the chat, he's won the um, Premier League there, he's won several FA Cups, and I think the Arsenal fan base are a, a strange one at that. I think the to win consecutive FA Cups like they did. And still feel dissatisfied with with team performance in relation to to league finishing. Uh, I think, particularly as an Evertonian that still hasn't seen us win anything in my lifetime, it, it is quite flabbergasting. But uh, as you say, there they they, they look like now they've kind of found the groove and they're, they're in a good run of form. Arguably, you know, it's it's two form sides meeting together um, mm -hmm. after our two last games against West Ham and Chelsea. They probably edge it in terms of their, you know, their run of form's been been longer. But I've been looking at the head to heads and we've lost four against them since we since the, the two one when Ashley Williams scored from the corner, uh, Ronald Koeman's first season. So I mean I have never particularly felt confident up against Arsenal, whether that be uh, Oh, well, particularly away um, at home. I think after the, the last couple of games, you look at Liverpool, you look at Chelsea. That you know the the fans have been turning up, and that certainly gives the seems to give the you know our eleven players on the field, uh, you know, a certain boost in confidence. And fingers crossed that West Ham game was the players clicking under silver because it certainly had that feel to it. Like mm. we were, I said, I've said earlier, you know. That was for me Everton's first ninety minutes under Marco Silva, where we fully dominated the opposition. We were mm -hmm. the better side. We played like we believed in ourselves in terms of our our forward movements, our conviction in our passing, um, the the link up play. People, you know, players on the ball knew who was running off the ball and where to find them. And from that, you know, from that perspective, it was a real enjoyable watch. And I think, uh, you know, we expected this coming into this point of the season. Um, we've got, we've, we had, you know, some of the tough games have been saved until the, until the, um, the latter part of the season. And you could argue that, you know, that's for the best of us. It, it could raise our performance levels, raise what we expect of ourselves, considering when you see how we performed against the likes of, of Chelsea in particular. And uh, as, an Everton, as an Evertonian, I think, you know, you've always got to be, in touch a bit with reality, I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, if we were, if we came away with no points. But I'm feeling a lot more confident coming up against them than if we would have given after that run that run in December. Uh, you know, our club is playing pretty strong right now. Um, you know, which means, uh, as I told told John earlier, my house is a mess. It's an absolute mess. I haven't had to clean after a game for a while. It's it's been great. I actually I didn't even go for a run today. I had to clean today because because it needed to happen. I haven't had that nervous energy after a match where I hate the world and I need to blow off some steam and I I'd rather not punch walls, so I 
clean. Uh, so, so yeah, it's it's been uh, it's been a nice little stretch for us, uh, and and that energy has been transferred in, into Goodison. You see the the, you, the 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 crowd has been awesome, and you, you hear the players comment on it. Um, it's just the energy, the energy around the club is a lot more positive right now, and it's been give and take. You know, it's been it's been from the 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 club, the the actual players upping their game, but it's also been the the crowd making effort. It's been a nice little mixture of both things. Like we talk all the time, most things are a gray area. You know, not just one or the other, and it has been a collaboration. Uh, Terry, uh, you know, possible starters is hard to figure out because they're, as Arsenal always is, they're pretty deep. Um, you know, they have. Leno, they've they've gotten themselves a, a quality keeper now. Uh, they they had Peter Check before, but he was starting to, to age a bit. Um, probably rolling with uh, Socrates, Koscielny, and Monreal. Maybe Mustafi, and I'm not going to say his first name because of the way it sounds. Uh, and then uh, Maitland Niles uh, on one side, uh, Gwenduzi, Ramsey, Kolasniak, uh, Ozil, Lacazette, and Obama Yang. You might see Iwobi getting in there. Um, dangerous players for you, Terry. Which players do you feel like are going to give us any trouble? I mean, they've got... I, I, I really rate Arsenal's team. I think they've got fantastic players. They've got a few areas where they're not as strong as they are in others, but they've got two top strikers between them. I think they've got 30 goals this season, and they don't very often play in a partnership either, like Azet and Aubameyang. Mm -hmm. It's just... I, I, I don't know about recently in their recent form, but I think typically... They don't play the two of them when they're away from home. Like they might play two at home, and mm. that's that's where I think we're gonna if we're gonna have any joy against Arsenal, it'll be because they're they're there to be got at away. Mm. They're absolutely like fantastic at the Emirates, and they you know blow a lot of teams away. But when they're away from home, I think they've um, I think they've won five, lost five, and drawn six or seven or something like that. Um, so they, they do lose games away from home because they seem to um, play a little bit more conservatively and don't um, don't dominate games as much. But we've improved a lot in defence the last few games. Like since that uh, long 17-day break, the Newcastle game aside, we've been really strong at the back. Sorted out a lot of the problems we had pretty, you know, before that with the the silly fouls for set pieces and conceding goals from uh, for set pieces as well. I think we're going to have to really be on our game to stop whichever one he starts with. I think it's Lacazette at the minute, um, but it's been Aubameyang earlier in the season. Both of them present very different problems, and they're both quality. I think uh, we've been linked with um, Aubameyang before he went to Arsenal, and what a dream that'd be. He's absolutely brilliant. I think uh, he was the top scorer for most of the season. I don't think he is now. I think he's fell behind a bit. But it's not even just that. Like, Ozil... Um, Ramsey, I think Ramsey might be injured, but he's playing like oh, he's on a farewell tour <laughs> because mm. he's leaving the summer. He, mm. He's not sort of put his flip flops on. He's thinking, I'm still here for a few more months. They're still playing me. I want to leave this club by getting them in the Champions League. And it's so tight for those Champions League spaces. So we are going to have a game on our hands with Arsenal because they can't afford to lose. They right. need to win their games out. Now, don't get me wrong, they're going to look at us and go, I wish we were away at Everton at the minute because we're in form and we've given them trouble before. And frankly, we owe them one for that home game because we absolutely we wasted so many chances. Uh, sorry, the home game for them away right. for us. We wasted so many chances though uh, in the first half and could have been two or three up at half time if we'd have taken them. Plus, their can... their ridiculous offside goal. Yeah, I mean, yeah. we were already 1-0 down, but we were well in the game, and we were at that point, we hadn't had our mid-season wobble yet. So we were, you know, we'd had a lot of few away games where we'd gone behind and come back into it. But that second goal, which was absolutely pathetic refereeing, it just killed the game there. We, once yeah. you go 2-0 goals down, it kills the momentum or, or, or anything that we had, you know, any belief that we had. And it, it, it was one of a long series of stupid refereeing decisions we had at that time. Yeah. But it's up there with the worst because I think two of them were offside in the same move, and it and it just <laughs> that that for me. I hope we stick one on them just for that because we it was we didn't deserve to lose that game. We deserved to get something out of it. Yeah, yeah. That's the one. That was one of the ones that really started the 
it does certainly seem to be raining shit on us. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it was, it was just stupid little decisions that happened. Um, yeah, I mean, Ramsey usually, you mentioned Ramsey, he usually plays well against us. You know, I feel like he tends to score on us. You yeah. know, that's, uh, that's uh, he, I don't know if I would normally, if I was another team, if I would write his name down as a danger man, but because he tends to score on us, yeah, I think we got to keep an eye on him. Um, yeah, I think if you don't see uh, Lacazette and Obama Yang starting uh, side by side, Iwobi will come in for one of those guys. That's, I th- my, my guess is Lacazette would probably hit the bench and Obama Yang would be the one to start. Um, I'm trying to remember. I feel like that's the way they started against Newcastle. I'm not sure, but I feel like that's the way they did. Um, But other than that, I mean, mean, they'll probably run three in the back with that with the two wing backs, which I think that's kind of the way they've been doing things now for the most part. Um, I mean, which I I I don't really think that affects us too much as far as formation goes because we've played well against that formation recently. Uh, so that's not really an issue. I, I don't know. I think we're just looking at a, at a squad that just has a lot of depth. Um, but I don't look at them and say they're unbeatable. I don't. They've got, a quite, a, they've got quite a few players out. Um, got Lucas Terea, who I'm a, a huge fan of. He's, he's a great player. Yeah, and Bellerin's fantastic. out too. Yeah. I, um, Xhaka too. Like, mm. you know, so there are some admissions from the squad. Just a and, deep damn squad, isn't it? I mean, they yeah. just... And I, I suppose uh, we're going to touch on, you know, European football later, but, you know, to be to be constant in achieving European football, that's the type of squad depth that you need. And, mm-hmm. you know, a model that we should be looking at, uh, 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 replicating and for to seriously <laughs> assault the European places in the future. And he said there, Jerry, like, if, if they're rolling with the three at the back, that's you know that's full credit to Emery because you look back to his his severe teams. Um, I, I don't think they rolled with a three back. I think mm. I'm pretty sure that was a, a solid four back. And you know, yeah, it, it, so he's he, you know he 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 dealt with what he's got and, and he tried to make the best of of what he's got. He's not been stubborn, mm. yeah. and I feel that's why you know you kind of seeing the rewards of that now. But I don't know in 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 in, in regards to Everton. I'd I'd love to just carry on, the, 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 keep keeping these good big results coming because mm. I'm, I'm sure it do Marco Silva a huge boost come the end of the season in terms. I know that he said with um, him and Marcel Brands are already agreed on the summer targets. However, if you continue to pick up these big wins, uh, you know, on the telly for the world to see, mm. I'm sure that would be a you know that that's a pull factor. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that's huge. That's great marketing. <laughs> when you're when you're like you know internationally shown all over the you know all over the world and you're actually giving these these teams you're outplaying them uh, that's the that was the thing that really bugged me about the Arsenal match man that for we actually we did not do what we did last season which is you know the not in the face treatment we actually <clears throat> went out there we had opportunities and I think we were lamenting being clinical at that point that was one of the things we were really talking about. We had chances, but we just were not finishing. We're still having some issues with being clinical, still having that. However, we were against West Ham, we were just f- flat out dominant. We had almost all the opportunities. And when you do that, you better damn well outscore the opponent mm-hmm. when you have all of them, you know? Yeah. So I don't know. I, I'm... <sighs> I don't know. I, I guys, I, I got to be honest. We play these these uh, top six teams, and I'm I, I get excited for them. You know, I know for a little while we were like, oh shit, but now it's like I I feel like they're winnable. I really do. Yeah, you kind of you kind of it, it, these performances against top six sides this season, bar a few, for example, Tottenham at home. Oh. You know, they're a complete juxtaposition. You you know, for, and I'll take the the two, the home and away games against Arsenal last season. You know, getting beat five two at home and getting absolutely demolished five one away, like they they were like bottom of the barrel, lowest of the low last season. They were you know really rub, yeah. rubbing salt in the wound type type of performances, and yeah. I, 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 I can't see performances like that coming from us anymore now. You know, because I've got a lot of confidence from the last few showings, and it's a it, you know it is a completely different team with. 
different players and it appears mm. a completely different mentality. So, you know, fingers crossed, for example, the likes of Bernard, Richarlison, Dean continue the 5 4. This is why these players come to Everton uh, or the Premier League in a big way. Like, if you're a player from abroad, from another country, a different league, you don't come over to play against Burnley. You got you want to play Arsenal, you want to play Tottenham, you want to play Chelsea, you want to play Man United. It sounds bad, but if you're a player, if you go to Italy, do you want to play Sampdoria or do you want to play AC Milan or do you want to play Juventus? You, you, you do. The, the players want to come to this league and these are the games that they look forward to the most, the games that they probably watched on their TV when they weren't in this league. So these are the games you really want to be performing in because not only will it make the players you've got here you know, more confidence if they can, you know, they can compete at that level. They go, well, I can, I can hang with the, you know, with, with players at Chelsea, players at Liverpool, players at Arsenal, because, you know, we've played against them and, you know, we've done all right. It, it's all well and good beating the teams you're meant to beat, but that's the way uh, most top players have always played. Like, cause it's like that in a lot of, it's even more like that in other countries where, um, you know, the top teams beat the lower teams practically 95% of the time. It's the same here, where yeah, we might not beat the lower teams every time out, but the games they look forward to are the, are the big TV games, the big Sky games. The that's what people are attracted to in the Premier League. It's what they like to watch when they're not yeah. in this league. So you want to be seen beating these sides, and the fact that we went two years without doing it, Silver said himself, that can't happen again. It was ridiculous, and it's yeah. it would have done eventually lasting damage because it would have made us unattractive to players we had to bring in from abroad. I think. Yeah, it's nice, it's nice to actually look forward to those games now, isn't it? Because as you say, those last two years, you know, those big games, they just felt like chores. Yeah. Yeah, Terry, you bring up a point. Uh, I know when, not the same thing at all, and I feel silly mentioning it, but this is my example. When I was a senior in, in high school trying to pick what college I was going to play for, I, one of the things I did was I looked at the schedules for the schools that were that were, that had recruited me and I saw which big teams they played I wanted to see who they played against and the team I ended up signing for the school I ended up signing for played like you know two huge local schools that I knew that I used to follow when I was growing up you know Wake Forest and NC State so I got to play against those teams and that's almost the highlight of my playing career forever was doing that you know what I mean? So not the same thing at all, because it's like it's like you know comparing you know Pop Warner, f you know American football to NFL football. It's not the same thing at all. But it's it's a name recognition thing, and it's it's sort of vicariously getting your dream. It's not the it's not your dream move, but it, you're getting a, an equivalent to it. You know what I mean? So it's it's a big thing for them. So yeah. a, a strong performance for us would, would do a lot for recruitment this summer. If they don't even know, they, it could be we've already got our people lined up and it's already going to happen. <laughs> no, you yeah. never know with Marcel. It doesn't hurt, yeah. it doesn't hurt because it, it's all about, half of it is about perception as a club and that mm. will lead into what we're going to talk about next. But um, yeah, yeah, Bernard, when he comes from um, Ukraine, he doesn't come here thinking, I can't wait to play Huddersfield. He wants to play Man United. He wants to play Arsenal. It's It sounds harsh on those teams. They're your bread and butter games, but they these are what those players, the games those players want to win, to play in. And it's nice as supporters to win those games because you just think, oh, it, it feels great for supporters and it feels great for the players as well. Yeah. Yeah. That's, it's really hard to argue that, <laughs> you know, argue against that anyway. Um, predictions. Let's make these quick. Uh, Terry, what's your prediction? Um, I'm gonna go with one-one. One-one. I'll be happy with that because they're a good team and they need they're in form and they need the victory. But I think we, I've got it in us. I think we'll we'll get a one-one. Maxi Rodriguez, what do you got? Never say that again. <laughs> um, Two-two-one Arsenal. Which one was Maxi Rodriguez? He's the one who played for uh, Argentina. Yeah, I'm pretty certain Liverpool. that's who it was. That guy played for Liverpool? Yeah, he did. I he never played. knew that! He was the guy with the craziest goal ever. Like, that's ridiculous super volley. But that's the one yeah. I'm thinking of from Argentina. I never knew he played for Liverpool. Now I feel like a real yeah. jerk. 
Mm. Yeah, very, very See, funny. I didn't know that. That sucks. Yeah, I used to get that in school. Shit. Matthew Rodriguez. <laughs> See, you can tell I did, I've done a lot more research on, on Everton than I have on Liverpool because fuck them. Uh, <laughs> I may even keep this portion because it shows how naive I am. Uh, <laughs> At first, I was like, why is he saying that? He's just embarrassed because it's a team a player. No, if he played for Liverpool, that's shitty. Yeah. <laughs> <All right. laughs> um, what did you say? Because it totally, your prediction was overshadowed by, by Liverpool shit. 2-1 Arsenal. 2-1 mm. <laughs> Arsenal. I want to flip yeah. that around. I actually think 2-1 we win because why not? See, and this is a nice balanced uh, panel of predictions. Very balanced. 2-1, 1-1, 2-1. There we go. All right, so now we're not screwing karma over in any way. <laughs> so it shouldn't screw us over. All right, so that's it for our Arsenal preview. Um, if you've been digging our videos, please subscribe to the Top of Blues YouTube channel. We'd sincerely appreciate it. Um, and I can assure you, there will be no more mention of Maxi Rodriguez. Uh, <laughs> If you want more Terry, uh, check out uh, Liverpool Echo Fan Jury. Uh, you can keep an eye on his Twitter, or you can just give him a call at home. Uh, yeah, he'll let you know when he's going to be there. Why not? He's cool with it. Uh, so uh, Max is, is all over the place. Uh, keep an eye on his Twitter. He'll tell you when and where he's going to be, but he's frequently going to be on the Toffee Blues website, the brand sp spanking new sparkling Toffee Blues website. So keep an eye on his analysis there. It'll happen. Uh, all right, let's move on. We're going to talk about Europa League, uh, whether or not it's a good thing, a bad thing, or just, yeah, we just have a lot of stuff to say about it. So, onward. Bye.